Aaron. Um, I think I've gotten as far as I can get. It's pretty close. Um, I'll start with your questions and go from there. Um, yeah, I think that's totally possible. We have three participants at this point. So um, I think we have to consider in the moment us sitting a lot more rather than standing. Uh, the positioning of the television screen to the tables, uh, creating a space that feels intimate. Um, also, it's pretty likely that uh, the three of them from Coeur d'Alene High School are going to want to all work on the same project, which changes potentially a lot of these details. Um, I think it's important for them to be able to work on this project together. I think they'll get farther. I think they'll learn more about it. Um, you and I can talk about the documentation of that work. Um, yeah, I, I really don't see that as a problem, but it will have to monitor and adjust as we go. Um, I will explain the how might we here in just a moment. Um, I added yet. Thank you. That was awesome. Uh, not exactly. This is part of that longer conversation about how we make adjustments. Um, I'll show the syllabus here in a second. Uh, I'll talk about Trello as I go through it. I wrote a survey. I'll show it to you. Uh, and overall, I'm feeling really good. Uh, I just I walked away from our meeting yesterday feeling really good about um, where this is and where we're headed and just the different levels at which we're modeling this kind of behavior. We're personalizing the work for them. And... In a weird way, I'm encouraged that I was overthinking it um, and that the right solution is cleaner and simpler and more straightforward. Um, I think that's I think that's pretty powerful. So what I'll do is start with the syllabus. Um, I have learned that we do not need to use Blackboard. Um, so we're not going to. <clears throat> so in here where it says you'll submit your work, they're going to submit it um, to me, and I'll forward it to you. Um, it has to look like this because I'm the teacher of record at Idaho, but I'm trying to include you, and I'm pretty sure I've done that. I'll ask you to look over the syllabus. Um, thinking about using my Calendly page, you mentioned yesterday that you want to attend whatever Zoom meeting you can. Um, I'm going to have them schedule with me, and then as I get them scheduled, I will invite you as well. Um, other than that, I'm doing my best to include you and, and really talk about this with the us language as we as we talked about yesterday. So I will need you to look over the syllabus. Um, I kind of filled out the stuff I pitched at you yesterday about how the assignments need to shift. So anything and everything you have for feedback on the syllabus would be awesome. Um, I think I've updated the schedule. Uh, let's see. Now for the practice plan. I don't know exactly how long each of this is going to take. Um, and I don't know that I want a protocol either for the share out. I, um, I, I just feels more formal than is necessary, I think. Um, so let me go through the slides. <clears throat> yeah, and then uh, would love to get some feedback from you. So I'm going to go full screen here, but essentially what we're doing is making our own version of this stuff. And then at the end of each section saying, hey, if you want more information, here's where you can go get it in that uh, Design Thinking for Educators toolkit. So let's do it. All right, so this is afternoon. Uh, let's talk about where we're headed. And we're going to start by reviewing the syllabus. And what I'm going to do in this section is show them the... Um, they're really the assignment expectations. Um, you know, so we have sort of our schedule for what the whole course looks like. This is our six hours today. <clears throat> There's five hours worth of work to do in these five assignments before they come back. And then we have a four hour closing workshop, which um, those details are subject to change. Um, based on their progress moving forward. So then I'm gonna skip, so here's our agenda for the day. And, and on our slides so far, I don't have, um, the AM slides, I don't have those updated yet. I need to go back and, and update all those time points and everything, I'll do that. Um, but here's essentially our breakdown uh, for the morning. 
And then the afternoon, I've just clumped it as we're going to frame your design challenge. So, you know, maybe I break it out into define the challenge and create a documentation plan and create a project plan. But I'm not really sure how long that stuff's going to take. And we, we have to do it. So um, we'll try to throw a break in there somewhere. But again, I think with a smaller group, we can be a little bit less formal about when that break occurs. Um, kind of judge the energy level in the room. So we'll go through the syllabus just for the purpose of saying, here's where you're headed. And before you walk out the door today, we want you to feel prepared. Um, the truth is you can design think anything. So our transition point into the afternoon is allowing them to now use design thinking again, but this time working on a problem that they care about. So examples of types of problems, curriculum spaces, processes and tools, systems, we're for the purpose of our training focusing on the world of education but design thinking really can be used to think about and solve problems in in any arena we're going to limit ours to education so what we want them to do this is they're going to get up and move they're going to have stickies uh, write down their dreams hopes for what school could be one idea per sticky equal for volume so we're going to start positive dreams and hopes and then we're going to look at the the negative side right and the goal here is to draw out emotion, right? So before I explain to them why they're doing this, we're just going to say, hey, capture some evidence on your cell phone. Um, share out <clears throat> some of your examples of your dreams, hopes, gripes, and frustrations with the large group. So this is the key point here, right, is is the switch. We, we want to capture the stuff that generates emotion for us, right? We are a person in a context and the problem we're interested in looking at or problems are also part of that context. And one way to uncover stuff that we actually really care about is to look at things that generate emotion. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip some of these statements by rewriting them on separate stickies as how might we statements. These are opportunities for design. So in the next 10 minutes, we're going to do this. So we're going to actually have them standing at their vertical surface, mimic this, grab a sticky. And then look at that dream, hope, gripe, frustration. And on a new sticky, you're going to rewrite it as a how might we statement. So how might we blank? So an example of this would be students are always late to my class. So rewriting that frustration as how might we improve on time attendance in my class. Right. That's an example of taking that and framing it as a design opportunity. So we're going to do this for every sticky that's on their board in 10 minutes. Just it might not be enough time. Again, before we move forward, please take photos of all your sticky notes. We're going to come back out and share out. Hey, how about how might we process go? This is where you and I can attend to both the sort of process feedback, but also the specific feedback about their context. So now we have to start filtering you in order to take the next steps through our, co our course together you can't design for all of these things you're going to have to pick so in the next two minutes we want you and your group so assuming they're in a group or individually they're going to just have individual think time they're going to narrow down to three and if they are in a group together two minutes is not near enough time so we'll just we'll change that on the fly like if we get to this and we go you know what two minutes is not enough time i have no problem in front of them going to my laptop and saying nope that's that doesn't make sense you need more time and literally doing that. Um, I think that models for them being flexible. Um, and I have, I have no problem making those edits. So we'll just kind of feel how that goes. And then we're going to ask them to look critically at their top three, which one of these would have had the greatest would have the greatest impact, which one is it most exciting to you? Which one would you be proudest of? So let's say you could take on this design challenge and work on this thing and, and succeed. Which one would you be like, oh my gosh, if I could just do that one? Which one do you think would be the most challenging? And then which one is of, of um, interest to the most people? So thinking about trying to gain support for your challenge and your solution. Um, who else? Which one of these has the most number of people that, that, that would play the game? So we're going to capture some more evidence. Okay. Now they're going to choose the how might we that they're interested in. Okay. And this is sort of a stopping point. We can stop and reflect on this sort of phase if we want, point them back to this resource. There's uh, sort of the, the design kit, design thinking for educators toolkit and its corresponding workbook resource, which kind of walks you through these things. 
uh, they can reference those. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to transition into the Trello conversation. And I thought about do I want to give them options. And honestly, this is a choice that I made because it's convenient for me and I'm going to be doing the grading. I understand Trello really well, I can help them with Trello really well. It's a free resource and it's very visual. So we're going to tell them that we're modeling. Like if you're going to engage your students at some point in design thinking or project based learning, one of the biggest challenges is having ample evidence that the students can look at, the students can reflect on, the students can demonstrate, but you as a teacher also can look at and see learning. So you have to make a documentation plan and you have to commit to documenting everything. So the tool we're going to use is Trello. Um, and you're going to be using it as a, as a participant in this. You're going to be using this for the, the rest of the 15 hours. You'll be referencing this a bunch. So on the left is an example for me. I've used Trello uh, many times for different projects. I make a new board for a new project. Um, and so here's some steps you're going to go through. First, just go sign up. And I haven't decided yet if I'm going to like do one, you know, one click at a time, create a new board and name it. I'll probably go to like, okay, do these first three things and then check in with me. <clears throat> we'll adjust this if they're a team and they're all working on the same one. We'll show them how to add members to the board. Um, you're going to add cards to your done list, right? So you've already done some things. So add a card for each one of the things that you've done and then copy photos to that card. And they're going to need to explore this a little bit. I'm not going to give them step-by-step -step instructions on how to do that. Um, they just need to play a little bit. So again, this, this could take a while, but that's totally fine. They're getting comfortable with the tool. And then the metadata, right? The additional notes and thoughts and comments uh, related to that item on that card, they need to capture that stuff. The more evidence and documentation they can capture, the easier everything else in the process itself will be, and then also their reporting on the process. I've asked them to add you and me as members of the board. Um, so they're going to go explore and figure out how to do that. And then they're going to be prepared to share out with the group what their board looks like. Um, so since they will have added us as members, we'll be able to show the board on the large screen. I don't know what it's doing. That's interesting. Okay, then we have sort of documentation. We'll take a break. We'll come back, check our goals. Still not sure if this is relevant in the same way. Um, I'm going to leave it because we'll feel it out. I think it's meaningful stuff. But if we need to skip it, we can skip it. So now the next step for them is they need to make a project plan. So they have a place to put their stuff. Um, and now they're going to start building a project plan. So here's some step-by-step -step stuff for them. Make a new card in the to-do list that they made and name it end goals. On that card, you're going to add a checklist and add all of your end goals for the project. Maybe you haven't identified these yet. So let's take a little bit of time and start thinking about like by the end of the project, I want to have accomplished these things. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is add another called called indicate under another card called indicators of success, make a checklist on this card and add your indicators of success, right? We're starting to think about how will we know it worked? Okay. The next activity is you're going to add a card called brief. And in the description box, you're going to write essentially a short memo. And this memo is a way for you to kind of condense all the stuff you're thinking about, where you're headed, what you're working on in this problem, what help you need. It's, it's a quick description of the problem that you could hand to somebody that you're trying to engage in working on the design challenge with you. Okay. Now, before we move on, we want you to, you've seen a structure, you've added some cards, and maybe already you're going, I don't like the structure. This isn't going to work for me. Trello is very customizable. So if you need to reorganize this in a way that makes more sense for you, go ahead and do that. Do you need more cards? Do you need more lists? Do you need different lists? Um, go play. And then the challenge for you is to figure out how to add the calendar po uh, power up. These are things, um, different features you can enable on a Trello board. Go find the power up. Um, again, I'm not going to show them how, but they're going to need it for the next step. Now you're going to make a timeline. Okay. So if you haven't figured out how to do that yet, we'll show you. We want you to go back and add due dates to every card that you've created. As you're adding due dates now, this sort of next layer of thinking about, okay, I'm actually committing to doing some of these things. 
Maybe the structure of my board really doesn't make sense. Maybe I need to restructure it again. Take some time to do that, right? Some of this stuff that we did with checklists, maybe those checklists need to be individual cards. I tend not to make as many checklists anymore. And Trello actually knows this. They give us, um, if you're on a Trello board and you have a checklist, so I'll just go to, uh, I'll go to an example. Board of mine, here's brief, here's a checklist, my list, first item, second item, third item, okay. I can actually go into my list, I think it lets me do this. Yep, and convert it to a card. What that then allows me to do, first item and second item, is I can then put a due date on that thing. Okay, so that, that might be useful. Again, we'll kind of play with that as we go. And then we're gonna share out your boards and just share what we've learned, some structures, some things that are working, things that are not, where it's a chance to play with the tool. And then it's a, it, the teacher talk here is like, we're modeling for you a solution that works for kids to document their work. Uh, has a really nice mobile app that allows you to quickly grab photos and upload them. Okay, now we're into sort of our last phase. You're gonna go to the Design Thinking for Educators Toolkit and just read over page 23. It's a good sort of like things to think about before you sort of get started. We've been doing pre-planning and now you're like, okay, we're like the work is starting. So what we're gonna do with the rest of our afternoon is let you continue forward. Where, how, what do you continue forward in? Well, you're working on step one dash one, understand the challenge from the design thinking toolkit for, so I'm gonna keep saying this wrong, the design thinking for educators toolkit. And this is just gonna be up there for a while. I mean, it really is an hour or more, I'm guessing in that afternoon. And then they're going to come back and share their progress with everybody. Chance to talk about the lending library. I think that's important before we go. Chance for them to share their thinking. And then I need to put a slide in here about like, um, or just a reminder about the assignments and where to submit stuff and how to get a hold of us. Uh, and I think that's it. So curious about your thoughts on that. Let me know. Uh, yeah, I sure hope this video worked.